Rocks are hard and strong. Unfortunately, the Pokemon typing is a bit shit. They do hit quite hard, but with their speed being so low, they're often getting outmaneuvered by special attackers. Therefore, it's obvious to do a hardcore Nuzlocke of them. We start our journey getting woken up. And hold on, is that shoes in bed? What kind of backwards world is this? Unfortunately, none of the starters in this game are rock type, and I decide to pick Rowlet because if I pick any of the others, we'll actually have an advantage against them. We then run into a girl who's panicking because she's dropped her cotton candy on a bridge. I don't really know why she wants it back as it's getting pecked out by birds, but we help her out. We then run into this adorable little guy and we're already getting a good relationship going with rock type. After traveling a little further, we actually run into a Taurus and we're told we've got the option to grab its tail. Can you imagine actually trying that? Thankfully, we don't do that, and there's actually a bit of progression in the game we need to do before we can get our first rock type, so we'll just skip straight to it. First encounter is a rock ruff, and we end up catching it and calling it Pebble. We then travel just a slight bit further, and we can run into our second encounter being a carbink, and that thing gets called Geode. We then get a woman who shows us how to dance to use a crystal. Yeah, that's an actual thing in this game. I then decide it's time to take up some surfing on a mantine, and obviously, I'm a natural. <coughs> After that, we can run into an Eevee. What? What do you mean that it doesn't have a rock type evolution? It's supposed to evolve into everything. Well, that's a disappointment. We might as well battle how. I start off with Geode against his Brion, and I use Sharpen a few times in order to up my attack. Once my attack is high enough to three shot them, I decide just to take it out. He then sends out his Pikachu, and it survives on a sliver against one Smackdown, but it can't really do much damage to us, so we can take it down the next turn. Noiburn has its half flying type, therefore one smackdown takes it off the map. And lastly, we have his Eevee, but all that thing can do is quick attack us, so that secures us the win. We then get introduced to a new character in Gladion. He thinks he's really strong, but we've got a rock type, so he really can't do much to us because he's got flying and normal types. We then have the joy of starting the water trial where we need to look through ripples of water. Unfortunately for us, we're doing it in a place that rivals Britain's weather, and that sends out an Araquanid. It's actually pretty scary, it's incredibly powerful and super effective against us. And on top of that, he's actually already killed a few of my runs before this attempt. I start off with Rockruff, as at this point, he's actually my most powerful Pokemon, and he should be able to survive a hit from this thing. I start off by going for a Rock Tomb, as this is going to lower this thing's speed, and it hits me back with a super effective Bubble Beam. Unfortunately for me, there was actually one roll where this does end up killing the Rockruff, and he happens to get it against us. Literally a 1 in 16 chance, and we've lost him after only being able to use him for a couple of battles. This does, however, allow us to bring in Geode safe, but he'll bring in a Masquerain alongside him. We then have the Masquerain decide to use Tailwind. This means after this turn, the Araquan is actually going to be faster than us. And as you can see, even though we do okay damage to it, it does a lot more to us. Thankfully though, we do only need one more smackdown on it to take it out, and we did get knocked down to the red, but Masquerine can't really do too much against us, and we're four times effective, therefore we can take it out and win this trial. We then have our soul stared into. She seems to like the fact we've got some moxie though, and lets us go on our way. I then know that I need another team member. This means I need to start fishing, and it takes forever. Finally, we run into the Corsola and we make sure we catch this thing. I end up giving her the name Marble. We then end up having to fight some old guy for someone else to be able to marry his daughter. I don't really know how we end up getting roped into this, but it did work out. Not that they're grateful, I didn't even get an invite to it. I then decide I want to do a bit of wrestling, but it turns out in this world, only the Pokemon get to participate. And for the second time in this run, I have to see a Rockruff die. Why are you rubbing salt in the wound, man? After that devastation, we need to perk ourselves up. So let's go beat another challenge, and that's going to be the fire trial. Before they'll let us battle, we have to watch a dance show. And eventually, the Totem Marowak wants to fight us. I opt to start off with Marble, as it's got the water type in. I begin with a bubble beam, but it does end up blocking it with a detect, allowing it to bring in its Salazzle for free. Thankfully, the Salazzle just wants to poison us, and this means I can go for a bubble beam as the Marowak brick breaks us. We do have a shell bell, so we are able to have just enough health to be able to survive one more hit from the Marowak, but it didn't matter anyway, as for some reason it went for hex over brick break, meaning it did next to no damage to us, and we took it out. 
At this HP, the Salazzle actually can't take me out even with its Vino Shock, therefore I opt to go for a cover to get half my health back. Once my health's in decent standing, I'm actually able to go for a Bubble Beam, but it doesn't quite take him out. And at this point, I am actually able to be taken out, especially if he crits me, therefore I decide the best thing to do is bring Geode in. Geode is naturally incredibly tanky, so he can't really do major damage to him, therefore he can just attack once with Smackdown and we've won the trial. After this, we're introduced to Colrus, and I've gotta say, when he's in 3D, it makes that like headband thing look a lot worse. We then get to Diglett Cave, and Olivia won't quite let us past her. Thankfully though, at this point in the game, you can get encounters here, therefore we can get our next one being a Larvitar. Once I catch it, I call it Obsidian and carry on. I then read that you can get a Bonsly in the Lush Jungle, but for some reason during the trial, you don't actually get any encounters here, Therefore, I dip right on out of there. Thankfully though, Bonsley do spawn in a separate area, therefore I am able to grab one before the start of this trial. It gets the name Basalt, and it's the key for carrying on this run. It already knows Mimic, therefore we can evolve it straight into a Sudawudu. And then we need a move, therefore we have to get a bit better at the Mantine Surfing. After that, we grab some ingredients and we create a nice little soup. Unfortunately for us though, it brings forth a Fun Mantis. I start off with Geode as it knows the move Solar Blade. Therefore, I can opt to use a Reflect and it stops it from doing any major damage to all of my team. Now that it's used the first Solar Blade, it's actually going to have to charge up for the next one, so I'm free to bring in Basalt. She does hit us with it the next turn, which does do some pretty major damage, but the Reflect stops it from being a KO. We then have the Kecleon she brought out use Sunny Day, and that means that it has sealed its own fate. I can use a Z power fire punch and it takes the Lorantis out in one. Now, if I'd have taken Basalt one level higher, I actually would have guaranteed this KO, but there was a one in eight chance we lost it. Not that we had to worry as we didn't get unlucky. Obviously, Kecleon can't really do too much and therefore we take it out swimmingly. We then run into Lily who's telling her Nebby to use Splash. Oh, it's because of me? I'm flattered. What's that in the sky? Oh yeah, it's the subscribe button for my channel. Make sure if you're enjoying the video, you do that so you don't miss out on uploads. I then carry on a little further and I actually nearly lose Geo to a Diglett. Like, he survived on one HP. And we finally made it far enough where we can get ourselves a fossil and I pick up the Helix fossil. We revive it and we give it the name Quartz. We then have a few grunts getting a bit annoyed over a Pokemon and looking at it, I can see why. What a beauty. After this, we carry on a bit further and we end up catching a nose pass and I make an error. I call it Marble as well. So we have two Marbles. At least the one I misnamed you can actually collect. With all that done, we finally got the next Grand Trial being Olivia. She starts off with Anarith, so I decide to start off with Marble 2. I do this so I'm able to use Thunder Wave and it definitely can't take me out in two hits. So even if I do miss my Thunder Wave, I'll be okay. She then goes for a full heal as I decide to hit it quite heavily with a power gem, but I decide I want this thing paralyzed, so I go and paralyze it again, but it does knock me low. At this point, I decide it's best to use the move rest, and it actually does get stuck in paralysis on this turn. Obviously, my rest is cured with a chesto berry, and that means I can take him out on the next turn with one power gem. Next up, she decides to send out Lily, and I straight away decide I need to thunder wave this thing and paralyze it. It hits me for huge damage with a Mega Drain, and that means Marble can no longer stay in. Now, Lilip is pretty scary, so I decide what I want to do is I actually want to get it to use all of its Mega Drain PP before I attack it. I use Protect every other turn, and then I make sure I've got Light Screens set up, because that means that I'm not going to take too much damage from the Pokemon. I also set up some Stealth Rocks, as a double Protect at some points is a bit pointless, and I don't really see the point of getting much damage on them. Once it's out of Giga Drains, I then decide it's time to bring in Marble the Corsola. Except I miscounted and it ends up hitting me for half my health. Since it's paralyzed, I am faster than it, therefore I can use a Recover, and that means it can just use an Ancient Power against me. Once I end up knocking it down to half health with Bubble Beam, I use a Brine. This thing unfortunately ends up critting it. Now, I was planning it on using the next turn to recover, so I will be on good health for Lycanroc, but because of this crit, I'm actually in a bit of a precarious situation. On its first turn in, it uses Bite on me as I hit pretty heavily with a Bubble Beam. Now, Bite does have a chance to flinch or crit, therefore I decide to use Recover until I'm at full health, 
and that means no matter what, I'll be safe to use one more attack and that will take him down. We then get the joy of being introduced to Lusamine and an ultra wormhole opens above us. It's a Nihiligo too, and that means it's rock type so we can catch it. Oh, Pokeballs don't work in here. Well, that's gutting. What's not disappointing though, is the fact our Larvitar is finally ready to evolve into a Pupitar. With that, we end up having another Howl battle, and this one actually took quite a bit of thinking to be able to get past. His Pre-Marina is pretty strong against all of our members, and we have to be really careful at this start. Therefore, I decide to start off with Marble 2, and I end up using a Thunder Wave as it hits me heavily with a Bubble Beam. I then decide to use Rest, as I've got Sturdy on my Nose Pass. That means when he goes to use his Z-Move this next turn, I can actually survive it using my ability. I then decide to try and chance the paralysis by resting again, but unfortunately we don't end up getting it. This means I'm asleep and I've got no chance of waking up, therefore I switch out to Geode. Geode tanks a hit pretty well and then on its first turn in, it can set up a light screen. Obviously the next bubble beam knocks him pretty low, but a citrus berry heals us back up to where we were. I use one protect as it goes for another bubble beam as I kind of want to waste the PP on its bubble beam as much as we can. I then use an Ancient Power and I actually end up getting the Omni Boost. This means we get one or two more turns with Geode in. And as I say, we just use Protect and Light Screen to stop it doing as much damage to us. Unfortunately though, on some of my Protect turns, it actually ends up paralyzing itself, meaning we're not wasting as much PP as I want. Now that we're one shot and quite low, I decide to bring Marble in. On the first turn in, I use an Ancient Power as it goes for a Bubble Beam against me. Thanks to the light screen that's up, it does pretty pitiful damage, and since he's less than half health, we can now use Brine, which will double damage and take it out. After this, he decides to bring out his Raichu. Now, no matter what move he uses, we can actually survive, so I decide to stay in and use a Bubble Beam against it. Now, the next Psychic he used won't actually take me out, so I opt to go for a Recover. I decide since he's going for Psychic, I might as well stay in and waste his PP, as I've got a Ground type and he can't hit that once I've done it. Unfortunately for me though, he actually decides to switch to Electro Ball, and that means I've lost Corsola. On the upside, we don't need to rename the other Marble, but it's still going to lose another team member so early. Obviously, this is an Electric type, and Obsidian is a Ground type. Therefore, I opt to bring him in. On his first turn, I use Protect to try and waste some of the PP. And then on the second turn, he does manage to hit me, and he knocks me less than half. But I have a Citrus Berry equipped, which will knock me out of the range. I then set up a Sandstorm as this doubles my Rock type's defense, and that means he's not going to take me out in two hits. Unfortunately though, the next Psychic he uses does lower my special defense. Fortunately though, the combination of both Dark Pulse and Sandstorm does take it out. Against the Noiba, I am actually too low to stay in, so I bring Basalt out. He can make very quick work of both the Noiba and the Tauros. Lastly, we have his Flareon. It hits me with a Fire Fang as I miss a Rock Throw. We then manage to both connect on the next turn, but the turn right after his Fire Fang ends up flinching me. It's not worth risking a crit and staying in, therefore I decide to bring Quartz in, and obviously it's a Water type, so it makes very quick work of this Flareon. How then does give us the Lycanium Z? I can't believe he would do that to me. And then as we carry on, we're reminded of our other fallen comrade. So much salt in these wounds. Oh, you do flatten me, Acerola. I'll get my tiara on and enjoy this. Then for some reason, Team Skull is shouting at a bus sign. What is wrong with the people in this gang? Since we know how they work and read, we can get the bus and go up the mountain. And with that, we end up running into the next totem Pokemon being Togedimaru. Now, this thing's got a steel type and actually makes it pretty deadly. I decide to start off with Basalt, and I want to use a Bulldoze to not only lower its speed, but do four times effective damage. Unfortunately for me though, it uses Spiky Shield. Now, this thing's obviously going to want to sweep my team with Iron Head, therefore on the next turn, I decide to use a Torment against it, so it can't use it two turns in a row. Since the Skarmory didn't end up attacking me, I'm actually on enough health where the Skarmory can't take me out, therefore I can also use a Torment against that, and that means I know the turns that I can switch in where there won't be any steel moves. Now, the Togedimaru can't be hit on a turn where it's using Spiky Shield. Therefore, I need to attack it on a turn when they're both attacking me. 
The Togedemaru knocks me low, but I have a Citrus Berry equipped, and that puts me out of range of being taken out by the Skarmory. Unfortunately, though, I don't get the chance to get off a Bulldoze for the simple reason that I flinched. Now, I was supposed to be able to get one Bulldoze off, but the Togedemaru made sure that wasn't a thing. It then ends up using Zing Zap against me, and I have to sack my Sudowoodoo here. Unfortunately for me, nothing can safely switch into an attack on this turn. Fortunately though, this does mean I get a free switch into a Pokemon, and that Pokemon being Geode. I know they're both going to use their Steel Attack on the turn I come in, therefore I can use Protect and I'm safe from it. Then on the next turn, I know I'm going to be safe, so I can set up a Reflect as both of these guys are physical attackers. I then Protect again to stop them from using a decent move against me, and since I know the Togodomaru is going to go for Spiky Shield, I can then use a Smackdown on the Skarmory to bring it low and make it so we can hit it with ground moves. I then decide that I need to hold on. What I do is I hold on until my Reflect comes down so I can set it up again, and then protect once more just to ensure the Pokemon I bring in is going to be safe. I choose to bring in Obsidian. Obviously, I've taught it Protect to ensure it's not getting double hit with Steel moves. And then the next turn, I can Bulldoze. It doesn't hit the Togedemaru, but it will hit the Skarmory. The Skarmory then decides it wants to put a Spanner in the works, and it actually uses a Stats move on my Protect turn. This means they're actually now alternating between using Steel moves, so only one of them is going to hit me but I'll only be able to protect one as well. Now, at this point, the Reflect has worn off and it's not safe to keep him in. Therefore, I bring back out Geode. I choose to protect on the turn where the Togedemaru is hitting me and set up the Reflect where Skarmory hits me. Not that it matters though, as it actually ends up missing. With the Reflect set up and the Togedemaru being on the turn where it's not going to be attacking, I can then bring Obsidian back in. Unfortunately, on the turn I do that, Skarmory ends up hitting me and getting the defense boost. But the main issue is, I've still not made any progress on this Togedemaru, therefore I decide to let it hit me, and hit it with a Bulldoze in return. This will take out the Skarmory, and it'll lower the speed of the Togedemaru. I also had a Citrus Berry ensuring that I wouldn't be one-shot to anything else. We then have Togedemaru decide to bring out Dedene instead of a Skarmory for the Pokemon that it's going to be having with it. And for some reason, on my Protect turn, it decides to go for Bounce? Now, this thing is slower than me, so I know I'm not going to do much damage, therefore I decide to bring Marble out. Unfortunately though, the bounce hits and paralyzes Marble straight away. Marble was then going for a Bulldoze on the Iron Head turn, but he gets fully paralyzed, meaning it was useless bringing him in. I opt to switch out to Quartz, and Quartz ends up taking a Super Fang, which halves his health, as the Togedemaru goes for a bounce. Quartz is obviously not going to die to a bounce, and he's actually still slower, that means I can use one mud shot, and it actually one shots instead of just lowering the speed. This means we've finally taken down the totem Pokemon, and we've got a ground Pokemon in the back. That means the Dene really can't do anything other than use Super Fang to half our health. Obviously, this is impossible to take us out with this method, so we take it out incredibly easily. We then get introduced to the captain of Team Skull, Guzma. This guy has one decent Pokemon. Genuinely one, and it has emergency exit. Therefore, this battle is incredibly easy. One Continental Crush triggers the emergency exit. We then can basically sweep with Ancient Power from there. We then get the joy of running on a horse, but I actually use a Repel while I'm in this area because there are two encounters I can get and one of them is in another route as well, so I don't need to waste both encounters. There is an encounter I can get before the next totem though, and that is going to be Meteor. I catch it and call it Slate. Now we've made it far enough in the game, we can evolve Marble into a Probo Pass, and then begin the next trial, the totem being Mimikyu. I start off with Geode, and I end up using Smackdown, as I need to break this Mimikyu's disguise. On the next turn, I decide to go for a Protect, as I kind of want to see what the Burnett's going to do. It wants to try and inflict a status on me, and that means I'm free to set up a Reflect and not get taken out. However, it gets a Curse off on me, so it's no longer safe to stay in. I switch into Marble as he's going to take a play rough really well. I then decide I want to lower this Mimikyu's speed and I can get quite a few Bulldozes off on it. Unfortunately for me though, this Mimikyu had other ideas as both the Shadow Claws it manages to hit on me are critical hits. This means instead of dropping its speed four times, I've only managed to do it twice. Now for my plan to work, I actually need this thing to be slow. Therefore, I decide it's time to bring in Quartz. It is just tanky enough to be able to survive a few hits and get off a mud shot. 
However, with the health I'm on and its speed still being faster than me, I have no choice here. I'm gonna have to sack something just because of them crit. The Pokemon I decide is best to sack ends up being the Menio. We've literally just caught it and I've not a chance to use it, but at this point it's the least useful Pokemon for the future of this run. He does go down swinging though. He uses an ancient power on the Mimikyu and gets the Omni Boost. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to stop him from being taken out though. At this point, this does give me a free switch in to my Obsidian. And when you give him a Citrus Berry, he has more than enough health to be able to take out the Mimikyu in two Iron Heads. Obviously, Burnett isn't going to do too much to it, so we can end up taking it down with a Rock Slide. We then carry on a little further and we've got another Guzma Battle. We start off the same way as last time using our Z-powered Continental Crush to trigger the emergency exit of Galissipod. This drags out his pincer. This thing has a move that always crits, but for some reason it goes for X Scissor instead, meaning I'm actually safe to set up a Reflect against it. I ensure on the last turn before we take it out, I get another Reflect set up, and it is enough, and we take it out. He then brings out his Galissipod. Now, I couldn't tell exactly how much health he had, and he looked very close to being the range to stay in and take it out. It wasn't worth staying in just in case, as we were definitely taken out if not. Therefore, I bring Quartz in. Quartz makes pretty quick work of him, and then he brings out his Masquerain. However, we have Marble in the back, who's a Steel type now, meaning that this Masquerain can't do anything to us, so we take it down with E. And with Guzma down, that means we've now unlocked Route 17, and we can finally get ourselves an Alolan Graveler. It gets the name Boulder, as I think that's quite fitting. And then I set it up so I can trade with myself and evolve it into a Golem. This means we're now able to go back to Route 12 and we can use the Island Scanner to run into a Rhyhorn. Obviously, this very quickly ends up evolving into a Rhydon. And with that done, we are now ready to take on Nanu. I start off with Geode as he can actually set up a light screen and this means this Sableye won't do much damage to us. Unfortunately though, this Sableye decides to switch out. I think this is the only time the AI does that. He brings in Crocorock, but it doesn't matter that much as he only swaggers us as I manage to set up a Reflect. A Reflect being up means it's safe to bring in Basol, and he does get swaggered, but he manages to break through and hit the Hammer Arm. He then sends out Sableye again, but I don't really want to be too low, therefore I bring Geode back out. He can set up another Light Screen, and that's going to make it safe to bring Obsidian in. Obviously, he manages to take down the Sableye fairly simply, and then he sends out his Persian. Now, I've actually got that light screen up still, and that means Boulder can take a hit if he wants to use his Z-move. Unfortunately for me, though, he decides he wants to use Fake Out. Therefore, I need to bring Geode in, as he's the only one tanky enough to be able to take the hit. He obviously can survive that and then get off another light screen, and then it is safe to bring Basol out again. And for Basol, I decided I was going to use a Z-Crystal and use All Out Pummeling. This, of course, one-shots the Persian, and that is Nanu down. I then decide to awaken my inner spy and sneak past all the grunts. I never said I was a good spy, alright? We then have another Guzma battle. And then I made sure I didn't evolve my Omanyte, and this little thing right here is the reason why. As an Omanyte, he learns Shell Smash earlier than if he was an Omastar. Obviously, once he's got that move, he can evolve into the Omastar I'm on about. We then get ambushed by the robots from before, and oh my god, they have a poi yeah, I love being purple! We then discover that Lusamine has some weird sick fantasy where she's freezing Pokemon. We can't be standing for that, so we've gotta take her down. I start off with Geode against her Clefable, as I can use Light Screen against it. I manage to waste a bit of its Moonblast PP, and make sure that I have Light Screen set up on the turn that I'm ready to switch out. Unfortunately, I do end up misclicking and bringing in Basalt when I was supposed to bring in Quartz. This means I'll get one less turn of Light Screen, but it doesn't really matter too much. I decide to use two Shell Smashes, and the AI prioritizes lowering my attack by using two Charms, but it really doesn't matter as I'm actually a physical attacker. Once we're set up, the only Pokemon that can actually survive our attacks is Milotic, and it can only hit us with an Icy Wind for incredibly low damage. Beautiful. What a way to take her out. She decides that she can't take the loss, so she does a Gwen by jumping into a hole. That done means we finally unlocked the place called Pony Island. This is home to a gift Pokemon in Aerodactyl, and I end up calling it Shale. We progress a little bit further, and we end up being able to be in a Machamp's arms. This, this is a dream come true. 
We then end up coming to the island of Raving Exeggutor. Team Skull then decide to come at us with a load of first form Pokemon and let's be honest, quite weak ones too. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Anyway, now we have a real battle and that is against the totem Pokemon Como O. I start off with Geode as it's a fairy type and it's recently learned Moonblast. This means I can set up a Reflect and then I can go for a few Carmine. Once two of them are done, I'm free to go for a few Moonblasts to knock the Como O low. We can't quite survive enough to be able to take it down using only this Pokemon. Therefore, I opt to bring Shale in on the following turn. Thanks to the Reflect from earlier, Shale survives on half health and can take the Como O out with a Supersonic Sky Strike. To be honest, his normal attack would have taken it down here, but it looks a lot better doing it like this. The Noivern is still alive and we're a bit low, but it can't do anything to Marble. Therefore, all we need to do is bring that out and we've won. It turns out I've learned a lot from playing Legends Arceus as I can play the flute. And then we have such a scary battle against Sunstrike Necrozma. I genuinely can't believe how easy it was to take that thing down. One thing that is fun to do though is we get to ride the Lunala through the wormhole. At the end of it, the Ultra Necrozma battle. Now, I literally have one Pokemon that can survive against this thing. One. And it's Marble. Therefore, I decide to go for the best strategy known to man and Toxic Storm. Of course it bloody did. Always punished. I opt to switch between a few Pokemon while using Protect to make this Toxic stack up. And on the last turn that it's going to do anything, I switch into my Rhydon and it ends up being one shot. Literally, had we hit that Toxic the first turn, this would have been fine. But because of that lack of accuracy, we have lost yet another team member. This is a horrible run for losing Pokemon. One thing that's not too bad to do though is take down Mina. Quartz has just enough health to be able to set up two Shell Smashes without being taken out. And then from there, we can sweep her entire team. We then have to deal with the Trial Captains. Now, the only one that's even a bit of a challenge is Sophocles. This is because I had to use Marble against Necrozma. That means it ended up over leveling and that actually means I can't use it until the level cap is raised again. Anyway, since this battle is a bit hard, I figured I might as well include it. I start off with Quartz against this Togedemaru as I've managed to teach it Stealth Rock using a tutor. Because Quartz is water type, I know Togedemaru is going to go for an electric move. Therefore, I decide to go through Obsidian to absorb it taking no damage. A bug move is going to do very minimal to Geode, therefore I can switch it in and we use it to set up a light screen. From there, I bring in Obsidian. He can obviously use a four times effective Bulldoze and it takes the Togedemaru out. Then out comes Magnezone. Now this is actually the reason that light screen went up before. It means that when Shale is switched in, he will have just enough health to be able to survive the Magnezone's flash cannon. From there, one Bulldoze is more than enough to take it out. But then he's going to send out his golem. Now this thing's actually pretty speedy. So I know I'm not going to get a hit off on it before it hits me. Thankfully, I brought my own. And this thing knows bulldoze. Therefore, it only needs to use it two times. And their golem is bye. Next up, we run into Nanu. And when you look at his face, you can kind of tell he doesn't want to battle. And he just gives us the crystal. This means that Mina's trial is now ready to be done. Versus the Rabombi, I decide to start off with Geode and I set up a light screen as it sets up a Quiver Dance. Now, even with the light screen, this thing can one shot most of my team. Therefore, I decide to set up a Sandstorm as well as this doubles my special defense also. With the up defenses, it's safe to bring in Shale and he can use one Super Sonic Sky Strike to take down the Rabombi. We then have the Pelipper and we should have been able to take it down with Shale, but when he scolds us, he gets the burn. That halves our attack, meaning we need to switch out. Thankfully, on the turn that we're switching out, we're actually losing our light screen. So I bring in Geode just so he can set up another one. Unfortunately, though, the Sandstorm is going to run out the next turn and we don't actually have quite enough health to be able to set up another one. Therefore, I decide to bring in Quartz since it's actually neutral against the water attacks, but it gets burned by the Scold also. Thankfully though, I've set him up so he's a special attacker. This means the burn isn't going to have the damage I'm doing. So it only takes me one ancient power to take him out. Now, since Promo Pass is over leveled, we actually need another team member for this next trial. Relicanth can be fished up at a 1% encounter on the coast of the Pony Island. 
one eternity later. We do eventually find it and we can catch it. It gets given the name Pumice and that means we can carry on to the next bit of the trials. This actually ends up being the final one and that's Hapu the ground type. Now they're super effective against me, but I'm also super effective against them with water. She starts off with Golurk and I start off with Quartz who can get one shell smash off. There is a good chance it uses Earthquake here, so I'd equip to Berry, so I take half damage if it does, but thankfully it just goes for a Stealth Rock. From this point, we can take down both the Golurk and the Mudsdale, just using one Scald each. Then she sends out the Flygon. Now this thing is absolutely going to go for a ground move to super effective, therefore I can bring Slay in for free. The Flygon can't take the Sky Strike, so we take it down in one. Her final Pokemon is a Gastrodon, but Shale can't stay in, and I know it's going to have to go for a Muddy Water, so I decide to bring Geode in. Geode was given a Pasho Berry, so it would be able to take the hit from the Muddy Water, and then it gets the opportunity to set up a Light Screen. After this, we've got Pumice, and since it's got its Water type in, it's neutral. On its first turn in, I decide to go for Yawn to put the Gastrodon asleep, and then I set up a Sandstorm with it, just so I can survive its hits more. After this, we can use a few Bulldozers, we want to lower its speed slightly, but she ends up using a Full Heal. This means I can't slow it down again and I need to use a Yawn in order to get it to sleep for the next Pokemon. Unfortunately though, it does mean it's taken out and it only gets this one battle, however it was vital in it. It made it so Quartz can safely come in, use a Brine and knock it just over half, then it falls to sleep. Now since it's asleep turn 1, we're safe to use one more Shell Smash and that puts it so it can be 100% taken out with one last Brine. I know you might think it was a bit silly to sack the Relicant there, but honestly, I don't plan on using it in this run, so I figured why not just stay in until it's taken out. With the level cap being over 55, we can finally evolve Obsidian into his final form, Tyranitar. We then have a battle against Gladion. Now, even though his Crobat does manage to poison us first turn, we manage to get one Shell Smash off, and with the help of a Citrus Berry giving us a bit more health, we can take down his entire team. We have to battle the Necrozma on our way to the Pokemon League, but he can't take on Obsidian. And with all that done, we're ready to enter and take on the Elite Four. kahili has got a team of flying types, so I decide that's probably the best one to take on first. She starts off with Bravery, and I decide to start off with Shale. I go for a bit of chip damage with Ancient Power and maybe the chance for an Omni Boost. We don't get it, and we do get our speed lowered. This means it ends up being faster than us and hits us with a Brave Bird as we take it out with a Fly. After that, she sends out Halucha. Now, this thing isn't quite strong enough to take us out, but we are slower than it. I decide because of that, I don't want to risk Fly missing, so I use my Z-Crystal to use Supersonic Strike to take it out. She then sends out Mandibuzz, and I'm too weak to stay in, therefore, I decide it's time to bring Boulder out. I then realize Boulder can't really do much and he's going to go for a ground move and take us out. Therefore, I switch back into Slate. After that, I now make the correct decision and switch into Geode. And on the turn it gets in, it gets hit with a Brave Bird. The next turn, it gets flattered, which raises its special attack, but it does manage to break through and get off a Reflect. The confusion ends up doing nothing, though. And that means that Geode can hit through with two Moon Blasts and that'll take the Mandibuzz down. Toucanon opts to use a move where it powers up on the first turn, but it doesn't matter as we hit through with Power Gem and take it out. After that, all that's left is Oricorio, but it's four times weak to rock, therefore we win the battle. I think the next easiest trainer to take down is going to be Acerola. This is because I went and got some black glasses and I decided to put them on my Obsidian. With this power boost, I'm able to use Crunch against the first two Pokemon and take them down with ease. Then out comes the Palo Sand, which just slightly survives. And then it uses Iron Defense. She then full restores, and this means my Crunch is now doing less than half. This means it only takes two shots to take her out, and thankfully, we're not one shot by any of her moves. It hits us with a heavy Earth Power, because it crit. And this means that although I can take it out on the next turn, it is no longer safe to stay in when the Frostlass comes out. Frostlass can't do anything to Geode, so I bring it in and use a light screen. And then that literally makes it free for Marble to be able to come in and plow her down. Drifling then comes out and we can take it down in three power gems. Although it doesn't want to go out without a fight, it ends up using its Ominous Wind and getting an Omni Boost. Not that it did anything for her though. 
Now, it took a bit of thought between which one of the next two we want to take down first, and I decide Olivia is the best one to be going for. She starts off with our Moldo, and I decide to start off with Boulder. Boulder can use Stealth Rocks on its first turn, and then, thanks to the fact it has a Citrus Berry, we can keep it in the green after using one Bulldoze. I don't really want to stay in, so I opt to bring Geode in, as he's able to set up a Reflect. A Reflect then makes it possible for me to bring my Quartz out. Quartz has enough health to be able to survive two attacks from it as we set up two more Shell Smashes. After that, Brian is enough to take out the Armaldo, but she then sends out Cray Dilly. Now, Brian can't actually take this thing out, but one thing that can is Hydro Vortex. After that, she brings out her Probo Pass, but thanks to the stones we set up earlier, we can take it down in one hit. And then, even with the Gigalith coming out and setting up a Sandstorm, it doesn't raise the special defense high enough to stop me from obliterating the rest of her team. With all that done, we have just one Elite Four member left, and it's a doozy in the Steel type. I make the decision to start off with Boulder, as this thing can set up a Stealth Rock. Then, I decide to bring in Obsidian, as its Sandstream ability will set up a Sandstorm to prevent its Flash Cannon from taking us down. We do need more protection though, so I bring in Geode and set up a light screen with it. And with all this special defense heightened, that means the moment I bring in Quartz, it takes minimal damage. I set up a Shell Smash as it uses another Flash Cannon. It then used a Thunder Wave, but I'd actually equipped a Berry just in case this happened. That means I can use Scold, but the Scold doesn't quite take it out. Since it's got such low health, I know he's going to use a Full Restore, therefore I'm safe to set up a Shell Smash. Now, you might be asking, why would you risk doing that? Can it not paralyze you on the next turn? But the thing is, at this point, we've lost the Sandstorm, we've lost the Light Screen, and our defense is incredibly low. Therefore, it's always going to see the kill, so we know we're not going to get status moved. And with the help of the Stealth Rocks from earlier, that means every single one of his Pokemon is one shot with Scalds from this point out. That's all the Elite Four done, and that means all that's left is Hal. He says we're something of a hero. How respectful of him. Doesn't mean we're not going to crush him down though. Unfortunately for how he actually starts off with a Raichu. And on top of that, I have taught all my Pokemon Protect. Can you see where this is going? Exactly. I'm going to bait attacks with Protect and then switch out to ensure a lot of my Pokemon manage to survive. Now, when you add up all the PP of Hao's moves, there's actually a lot of turns that you've got to be doing this for. But we're able to sack as many Pokemon as we want because this is the final battle. I've eventually made it to a point where the only move he's got left is Quick Attack. I lost four of my Pokemon whilst doing this, but one of them I didn't lose was Quartz. And since Quick Attack is both a weak move and resisted by us, this means we can set up three Shell Smashes for free. I then decide to set up some Stealth Rocks just for a bit of fun. But once that's done, it is GG. None of his Pokemon can withstand the power that is Quartz, and we have won. We are the first champion of Alola. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great day, and goodbye.